Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, July 24th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Man, a bunch to get into this Friday morning, Jonah. I mean, first of all, it's for me, it's MLB opening day with the Reds, and I know we got a lot of Indians fans out there as well. It's, a, it's the real opening day is today, but it was cool seeing baseball last night, the two games that were last night. But let's get into a lot of Ohio State football. There's so much to talk about. Let's start with the Buckeyes are starting on-field drills today. Now, it's walkthroughs, but they've just been doing, you know, voluntary workouts. And, you know, they had the one-week pause there because a few football players and some other athletes on campus came down with uh, the virus. But since June 8th, Jonah, they've been doing just voluntary workouts at the WAC. Starting today and for the next two weeks, they are going to be doing on-field walkthroughs with the coaches in addition to all the strength training that they normally do. And then two weeks from now, camp begins full-fledged camp begins, which is so exciting to think about. But it's also exciting that on-field walkthroughs begin today. Yeah, it, it's exciting because that tells me they're trending in the right direction. This is the first step in getting these guys back on the field. For Ohio State, I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, just walkthroughs. They're just going to be standing around and holding cards up. But for those who, you know, have watched practice and been to college football practices, walkthroughs, especially for Ohio State, is very important. And the reason I say that is because you have Kerry Combs there. He still has to make sure he gets all of his uh, implementations submitted to all of the players, so everyone's on the same play on the same page. You can only do so much uh, chalkboard talk and and videos. Now you actually have to get guys on the field so that they can have a, a clear understanding of what you're trying to do. Especially with two weeks from now, they're going to be heading out to the field full tilt for fall camp. So getting these on the field walkthroughs right now is a good sign. It's a step in the right direction. Another step in the right direction was our Bill Curlick had a huge scoop the other day on Wednesday. Uh, you know, he was told that the plan right now is for Ohio state to have its season opener on September 5th, as originally scheduled, as far as the date, it won't be against Bowling Green. It'll be against a Big Ten opponent. And what's interesting about that, Jonah, I thought, I'm curious to get your take on this. I thought once Ohio State canceled its non-conference schedule, they were just hoping that September 26th against Rutgers would go off as planned, and that would be the opener. It's very interesting that they are planning on the opener still being September 5th, and we're hoping you know, sometime next week they're going to release the schedule, and we'll see what this 10-game Big Ten proposed schedule looks like. But what great news that the Big Ten um, is fully planning on the schedule starting September 5th. And were you expecting that, or did that kind of take you by surprise? I was not expecting that at all. It, it really surprised me. Uh, and it's great news because that means we're, we're going to get football starting on time. I don't think we're going to get to 12 games. But any, any football that we can get right now, I will take it. And the Pac-12, it looks like they're going to have their season start on the 19th. I'm curious to see what the new Big Ten schedule is going to look like because if they're going to start that early, to me that tells me they're going to have uh, obviously more bye weeks in between games, which Gene has talked about numerous times, which is saying that those three weeks that they took off the schedule allows the Big Ten and, and Ohio State a little bit of flexibility just in case something happens. So, it, so if they're going to go from go full tilt September 5th against a Big Ten opponent, I wonder if they're going to have two weeks off until they play Rutgers or if they're going to squeeze, move that Rutgers game up. So just the release of the Big Ten new schedule that, that's set to come out, that's exciting. Also exciting on Wednesday was Gene Smith. Uh, we had a chance to have a uh, – well, we didn't have a chance to have a teleconference with Gene Smith. It was actually on Bishop and Laurinaitis on 97.1, the fan. But it was really cool to hear what Gene Smith had to say. And uh, Bo and James did a great job of asking the questions that's really on everybody's mind. And, you know, the biggest thing I took away, Jonah, was that Gene Smith seems like he is optimistic. And he's got to be so careful with what he says. But, you know, he just – he seems like he's very optimistic. And when, you know, when you, when you kind of cut through the BS and, and you look at what he said, at one point he's like, listen, we've got young men whose futures depend on us having a season this year. You know, that was – you know, that spoke volumes to me right there. Just your, your biggest takeaways from uh, Gene Smith's conversation with Bo and James the other day. Yeah, I think, I think that's a, a pretty big statement from Gene – for the simple fact that he is a, he's basically saying that we have to do everything possible in order to give these kids the best opportunity 
to live out their dream. And to me, that tells me that they're not going to go down without a fight with trying to get some form of football playing. And that's what you want to see. I know the debate nationally is the Big Ten may have overreacted and they probably jumped the gun a little bit, but we are, it is what it is right now. We are in this, we're in a situation right now where things are moving in the right direction as far as trying to get a schedule release, trying to get a protocol set in place. The, when Gene Smith talks, everybody should take listen because he's arguably the most powerful athletic director in college football. And he's going to have a loud voice when it comes to how things are, how things are happening behind the scenes with the Big Ten. And that's the message that you want to be pushed behind closed doors is we have to push forward if as long as we're being safe and we're giving all of these kids their opportunity because a lot of these kids' future and millions and millions of dollars rely on them being able to play this football season. And the one thing he did say is he's not 100% all there yet. As far, as far as feeling comfortable about the guys being full tilt back to practice, but he's saying that he hopes to get there. And, and I said on Twitter, I go, if Ohio State is going to have a season, there is no way Gene Smith is not going to allow these guys not to have the appropriate amount of practice time. Ohio State will put their best foot forward to make sure that this football team is prepared to play once the games are announced. Um, so just let's just make that clear. Even though Gene said he's not all the way comfortable yet, the Buckeyes will be on the practice field, barring some type of mass outbreak. And, and all the indications are they're very happy with the way things are trending within the, the facility. Guys are taking care of themselves. As Gene said on, on the radio show, it, it's a situation where the players are having to police themselves, and they've done a really good job holding each other accountable and making sure that People are following the proper protocols, and I know that you you wrote an article on on Bucknuts with with the the latest updates, uh, what to be expected coming up. And one of the things that really struck uh, stood out to me was the fact that when it comes to practice, guys will have to get dressed in their apartments in houses. So meaning that w whenever practice is over, there's no more hanging around the locker room and. Everybody, you know, 40, 50 guys taking a shower at a time is no. Take your stuff home. Bring it back the next day. We'll wash it. You get dressed at home. You take showers at home, and then we'll see you tomorrow after after film or whatnot. So that right there is, is very old school. <laughs> That's how it was in, in a lot of high schools where you, you go home and shower after practice or after a game. And it's pretty remarkable to see it at a major – powerhouse like Ohio State, those are some of the protocols that are being set in place. It's crazy, but whatever gives us football, I'm in favor of it. Let's move on to some recruiting to finish the show. Uh, Tristan Lee, the number three offensive tackle in the country, number 11 overall player in the country. So you got you know, three offensive tackles in the top 11 in this 2021 class. He announced his top five yesterday, Jonah. No surprise here. Buckeyes are in there. What a great final five he has. He's got Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, LSU and Oklahoma so he's really getting the bottom of the barrel here with those five programs but uh, I know I asked you about this maybe a month ago you said your you know your confidence level was kind of medium are you still about there you, you feeling a little bit better about Tristan Lee and just uh, what are your thoughts on the Buckeyes making his final five yeah same same feeling for me as previous previous as we talked about his uh, his top schools and with him releasing this top five is not a surprise that Ohio State's in there. I think Stud is doing a really good job here, just keeping Ohio State in there. I do think the opportunity to get him on campus once that happens will play a major role. It sounds like he has a really good relationship with with Henderson and a lot of the uh, Ohio State commits there because they're going pretty hard at, at working him. And right now, I, I believe that Ohio State – is in the mix. If you had to put a gun to my head, I'd say they were probably running third, but I don't think it's a distant third. I think we're right up there. And the fact that the relationships with uh, Stud and Ohio State recruits continue to develop, I think it has an opportunity to, to pay dividends down the road. 
Last thing, Travion Henderson, I talked about this on the show earlier this week, but I haven't talked to you about this yet. You know, he's not going to play his high school season because there's no high school football in Virginia this year. They've already announced it. I'm sure other states will follow suit. Hopefully not many, hopefully not here in Ohio. Um, but Travion Henderson, you know, there was a lot of, you know, people wondering, well, what's he going to do? Is he going to maybe transfer to a state that does have high school football? Is he going to reclassify? Well, he's just going to, you know, just go to his high school as usual, graduate early, not play high school football his senior year, which really – sucks for the young man uh but you know as i said on wednesday maybe this will in the long run be a good thing less wear and tear on his body he's going to enroll at ohio state early your thoughts on the travion henderson situation yeah it's unfortunate that he's not going to be able to to play his senior year you hate to see that um but the, the bright side is as you mentioned less wear and tear for a running back to me if you look at the the long list of ohio state commits that enrolled early over the last several years we've always had at least one or two kids that come in that that got injured their senior year ACLs or foot things of that nature so just getting Henderson on campus early and being healthy that right there is something to look at as far as the bright side I'm just pumped up that he's going to be an early enrollee and people will talk about what we have already there as far as the running back position with Marcus Crowley and Master T and still Chambers. But to me, Henderson is a, a dynamic game changer that we necessarily don't have on the roster as far as pure running back talent. He's that good. I, I said at the time that he committed, I thought he was a, a Reggie Bush type of running back. And just being able to get him acclimated to the game and on campus early and being able to participate in spring ball that will pay that will pay dividends down the road. The only thing that you, you, you definitely want to make sure is is those guys are staying in shape and all indications are he will be training uh, on his own with a personal trainer there during during the time he's away from football. So that's something that, that should make you smile because he planned to still be in top shape once he hits the campus at Ohio State. But overall, you know, it's unfortunate that those kids are going to miss playing some some live football there. But he's going to be able to enroll in Ohio State on good terms. Yeah, it sure feels good having the number one running back in the country that's going to be a Buckeye. And, man, his film more than backs it up. Great stuff as usual from Jonah Booker. Really appreciate it. Jay Book. Just a quick heads up. I will be on vacation next week. Dan Rubin will have you covered on Bucknuts as far as the Bucknuts Morning Five. So, Make sure you're heading over to Bucknuts to listen to the Bucknuts Morning 5. Thank you again to Jonah Booker, and thank you to all listeners out there for tuning into the show. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's have Buckeye Swag, best damn band in the land. 